Hey guys, you know who I am, Jeremy from School of Walk. It's Saturday Specials and this series is all about the bow. This week, chassis bow using my mum's special chassis sauce. The recipe for the sauce is in my first book, Chinese Unchopped. So, it's one of those recipes that my mum and dad used to, used to fight for in terms of whose was the best, but mum definitely comes out top here. So, really easy, very consistent. In fact, this recipe for the sauce has gone all over the world in many different ways. Loads of people have tried to steal it, but hey, my mum invented it first. So, finely chop some ginger and garlic. Thick to thin, two to one is what we go with of the sauce. The thicker ingredients are sugar, hoisin sauce, and tomato ketchup. So it's a home style chassis of this. We're gonna go thick to thin, two to one. So my thicker ingredients, I'm gonna go for four spoons, and I've got two spoons for my thinner, and that's dark soy sauce and rice vinegar. So thick to thin, two to one. One, two, three, Four. This dish is by no means healthy. Uh, so some ketchup. One, two, three, four. Same with the hoisin. Two, three, four. And now you know all of you that I can count. To four, just to four. Just like my son, he says one, two, three, four, seven, 18, 19, 20. Right, so rice vinegar. Couple of spoons of that. And then dark soy sauce, because that really caramelizes nicely around your pork belly. Give that a good mix. And get that nice barbecue color. Now, with the ribs in Chinese Unchopped, I actually sort of slow cook this for a good few hours and just keep topping it up with Coca-Cola. Again, not healthy. I've taken that out this time, and we're using this for the filling for some bao, to make some char siu bao. So I kind of want the sauce to be as sticky as possible. So I'm not gonna add too much liquid to it. I've got some pork belly here. I'm actually gonna use about half of this for this recipe, and then I'll use the other half for another. For char siu, you don't, really want the skin on so I'm gonna cut that skin off and you want a piece of pork belly like this that is got marbling of fat but not too fatty you can get hold of things like pork neck collar or pork shoulder as well they work quite nicely too and actually it's not a huge piece of pork so I'm just gonna go straight in like this and marinate that. Ideally marinate overnight, but it's quite a strong sauce this. So even if you just wanted this just for a simple dinner with some rice, some vegetables on the side, that would work an absolute treat. If you wanted it quick cooked, 20 minutes, 180 degrees C in the oven, turn it over another 20 minutes and that should do it. But with a slow cook, I've got the oven on at 150 degrees, put it on for at least an hour and a half uh, to two hours and it'll crisp up on the outside, go nice and succulent inside. Straight into the oven. And on that lowish heat, it, hopefully the sauce won't over caramelize, but if it does, we can just add a little bit of water as we go. So my chassis is done and I've actually covered it in tin foil about halfway through, just to keep that sauce. So, you can see that sauce is really caramelized. It's sticky, caramelly. That's a good texture because you don't want it to be too wet to go into the bun. Well, you can see how succulent that meat is. Oh yeah. Now when going into a chassis or bao, I don't want the pieces to be too small. I want it to be sort of chunky dices. This is making me salivate. I'm not sure if much of this will last to go into the bow, but 
These guys will have to fight me for it. And you can see here, with just a few slices of that pork, you get plenty to go into my bow. And what you want is this sort of sticky sauce to wrap around that. Give that a good mix. Let that cool, and then you can use that once chilled to fill your bow. Well worth the time and effort. So onto your bow. I've got my chasil mix, finely chopped or diced up, ready to go. I've actually got enough bow flour mix here for the whole Saturday special bow series. So I'm going to make up it's about three times or three bags of school of work bow flour. Um, if you haven't got access to our flour mix, then we have got a video uh, that you can do it from scratch with. So gradually add your water to the mix. And just to remind you, this mix is basically a Chinese plain flour, uh, some fast action dried yeast, baking powder, a little bit of sugar to feed that yeast. We're gonna mix that together. But what you wanna do is get your hand into there as soon as possible so you can actually feel how much moisture is in the flour mix. It's best to use the palm of your hand when you're trying to bring it all together. I know that I'm gonna need more than that, so I'm just gonna sort of go for it. Essentially what you want is just enough water to pick up all the flour from the edge of your bowl. It will feel sort of drier on the outside, so, so get your hand into that. Start to sort of almost knead that through to pick up the excess flour. And once you've got all that together, then you can start to knead that. And of course it's gonna look like it's a lot more dough and perhaps slightly harder work for me to knead, but I've got triple the amount of flour that than you need for one recipe. Okay, so this is in a good place now for me to bring out of the bowl. And you can see most of that flour is taken out of the bowl. At this point, you wanna to start to knead this on the surface here. It's a really good texture already because I can feel I've got just enough water where it's quite tactile, a little bit sticky, um, but it's sort of kneading and uh, sort of stretching nicely. So just give that a good push through. Take about sort of three to five minutes to knead and get to a nice smooth consistency. I'm going for that Play-Doh texture. So that's a nice smooth texture now. So I'm just gonna make that into one smooth ball of dough then sit that on the surface, cover that with your bowl. 10, 15 minutes. I'm gonna go for a slightly longer time on this uh, just cause I've got so much dough there. So my dough, it's become nice and soft now. So I'm gonna split this in five for the different recipes that I'm gonna show you guys spread across the next few Saturdays. Your first one, your chassis about, just roll it into a nice sort of thick cylinder, sort of salami shape really, and then wrap your hand over and then pull and tear. So I've got three pieces of dough. And then I'm gonna shape that into nice round balls. You might have seen this in a few other recipes of mine, what we like to call pinchy, pinchy, twisty, twisty at School of Walk. So you hole punch in, and pinch it, twist it back together. Hole punch in, pinch and twist it back together. Hole punch, pinch and twist, hole punch, pinch and twist, hole punch, pinch and twist. That makes a nice smooth ball of dough. If you really struggled with that hole punch, pinch and twist, just sort of roll it into a ball with your hands and that'll work too. Now with a chassis bow, this is a very traditional fold. We'll show you this. You can try and play with it, but the first the thing you need to do is just flour it slightly and push into that dough, open it up. And then, much like dumplings, I'm using my middle finger and thumb as my spokes of my wheel, and my wheel is the dough. So my index finger is just going to twist that wheel around. Twist, 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 twist. <laughs> right, and then my right hand is going to push in and roll that out. So push into the middle and twist, push and twist, push and twist. And you only really have to open it up sort of once or twice round because I want it thick enough to still be bread-like and a little bit doughy. 
Now I've got three pastries there ready to make my chassis bao. So I'm going to show you first off a very simple way to use your dough and not have to worry too much about pleating. It might not look as beautiful, but it will still taste great. What you want to do is you want to take a good amount of your mix into the center of the pastry. And much like so that pinchy, pinchy, twisty, twisty, just hover your left thumb over the filling and then just pull up with your index finger and thumb on the other hand, pull that dough up over your thumb. And that way, you've got sort of a wall of pastry all the way around your thumb. At this point, remove your thumb and close that together just with your fingertips. And what that does then is you can just have a very, very simple bow. It, it's not going to look like the most amazing chassis bow, but it does work. Your traditional fold goes like this. So you need your filling in the center. And then this is what I like to call the crane. It's a crane because my right hand comes from the top, not from the side. And it's always coming from the top, index fingers and thumbs to pick up your dough. And then what we do is we push in, pick up your index finger, pinch and pull up. Push in, pick up, pinch and pull. And that gives you more space to go round your pastry. Relatively complex this. It makes your bow look beautiful, but not 100% necessary. Once you get to the end, you kind of just twist it together and gather into those pleats. And you can see, once you finish, that you get a nice, beautiful, round, pleated dough. You might want to just close that up slightly. And that's your chassis bow. Very traditional fold that. So my chassis bow, pretty much ready to go. High heat. Eight minutes, your chassis bow will be ready. So your chassis will bow. Got a good amount of that mix in there. Hmm. And what's really nice about making things like this at home is that you can make your chassis from scratch. You can really taste the sort of ginger and garlic coming out of that meat there. Better quality ingredients than in the restaurant. So for me, it's always the best way, cooking at home. If you like to cook at home and you want to learn fun recipes like this, don't forget to subscribe, subscribe, subscribe.